Good evening. <clears throat> a warm welcome to all our members. Our event today for the evening is Mindful Leadership by Mr. Mudit Saxena. It would do all less good to act from heart. We'll all be surprised how small acts of attention and kindness can release the energy, enthusiasm, and imagination bottled up in our minds. A famous quote says, our journey to develop the qualities of leadership calls us to be present in this moment, to be still in the midst of activity, or more accurately in today's world, in the midst of the chaos that often typifies our lives. Great leaders know that under the turmoil of chaos and change, there is a beauty of patterns and designs. Mindful leaders know how to repeat success patterns and overcome failure patterns. To hear more on this, we have with us today, Mr. Mudit Saxena. Mr. Mudit Saxena is an international leadership coach, facilitator, keynote speaker, and influencer on a mission to empower businesses and individuals to become the best version of themselves. He empowers them with mindfulness, coaching and leadership solutions based on neuroscience, emotional intelligence, and life experience. He enables organizations and individuals to get 10x results. In his earlier avatar, he has been a C-suite executive who has worked in five countries. His last role was head of retail for Commercial Bank of Dubai. He has also worked for ENBD one of the largest banks in the Middle East and head of marketing at HDFC Bank. Over to you, Mr. Mudit Saxena. Thank you so much, Kala. That was such a brilliant uh, introduction. I wonder if there's you know, anything left for me to speak about mindful leadership, but I will. Let, just let me you know, make a good uh, try of it. And firstly, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming here today. You could have been doing anything else. I know it's a Monday evening. Uh, it's a busy day, but yet you made time to come here. So thank you once again for that. And uh, I hope we have a, a pleasant evening ahead of us. I'm aware that I'm speaking to the CAs of India, right? The, uh, the, the famous top end, which is just has a pass rate of about 2%, right? So all of you are extremely privileged, intelligent people here. But much as I do have this admiration, I also you know, have a great uh, anecdote to share with you. And this is an old Zen story where there was a very, uh, you know, Zen master who had trained a lot of people and one of his students was very bright. And then he went away, he left the monastery and he thought he was, you know, had really achieved a lot and he wanted to test his master. So he asked his master if he could come and see him and the master avoided him for a while. Till he kept persisting and then the master said, okay, come on. Why don't you come back to the monastery for a little while? And as he came back, the master kept quiet and the student kept trying to ask him questions to sort of try and measure, uh, you know, whether he knew as much or to test his master. And then finally, one day the master invited him to his room and gave him a cup of tea and he kept pouring the teapot till it overspilled. And then the student said, master, stop pouring. You obviously overspilled and you know, it's, it's going to fall all over the place and I'll get burnt. And then the master said, son, I think you're so full of yourself at this point in time, just like the empty cup that you say you've come here to learn, but I think you've just come here to, you know, uh, question and try and challenge me. It's really of no use. It doesn't matter who's better or who knows as much. So if you want to ever come and learn, try and be an empty cup. Because only when you're an empty cup can you receive. So I'm going to request all you bright, brilliant people here to be that empty cup today, just for an hour, so that we can all learn together. And maybe, hopefully, I'll be able to share a few insights about mindful leadership and purpose. Both these topics are actually two day topics for me where I speak for eight hours a day, but let me try and do my best 
uh, as to what we can achieve. And with that, I'm going to share my screen and let's go through some of the slides that we have for you. If you can hear me and see me and see the slides, can you just uh, give a quick thumbs up so that I know that I'm yeah. audible? Yeah? Yes. Okay, great. Excellent. So we're going to be spending time on mindful leadership and purpose. But I said, before we start, let's just understand, you know, what is mindfulness or why do we need mindfulness? And as we go through that, I have a little agenda for, for the evening, which is firstly, we'll discuss the need for mindfulness. Then we do a small mindfulness quiz. Then we'll talk about mindful leadership. And then we'll probably have a small taste of a meditation that will give you an idea about what mindfulness is about. And then we'll spend some time talking about purpose. So with that, if we were to move ahead, I'm sure all of you can recognize this, right? This is a goldfish in a glass jar. The attention span, they say, is not more than nine seconds at any point in time. My question to you is, what do you think is the attention span of a human being today? Any ideas? Anybody wants to take a guess? Three seconds. Okay, pretty close. One and a half seconds. <laughs> oh my God, that's too late. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what's happened is that, you know, the attention span apparently, uh, like you said, you've been very generous with one and six. It's actually, you know, the studies say that it's definitely not more than eight seconds across. So it's, it's become that, that small, right? Some other statistics, right? Every six and a half minutes or less, we check our phone, you know, whatever you're doing, right? So that's 150 times a day. Uh, some, some people check Facebook 20 times a day, right? You check your email 74 times a day, right? 65 to 130 texts. This is just some statistics from the University of California. Just to emphasize just one basic thing, that there is a scarcity of attention uh, today. Let's look at how we're wired, you know, it takes actually a couple of positive interactions to overcome one negative reaction, you know, interaction in every relationship, right? How many of you have spent two minutes in an argument and then thinking, you know, for the next few days, Are, I wish I could have said this. Next time I'll say this. I, you know, coming back with, you know, some arguments. Anybody else? Being honest, then, you know, just put your hand up so I know we're all on the same page. Yes. Yes, right? So that happens to all of us. So what are we, what's happening? I mean, basically, we are spending time on, you know, uh, it reminds me of Mark Twain, who said, there were a lot of things that happened in my life. You know, there were things that I excelled at, things that I failed at, things I was scared at. But I'm glad that most of it never really happened. Simply because our imagination takes the better of most of us. And we spend so much time in these thoughts in the regrets of the past and the anxieties of the future that we don't spend time where we are today. Maybe fear of missing out? Absolutely. Oh. I mean, uh, FOMO is, is uh, definitely one of those things, you know, it's, it's, because it's a very outward life that we uh, live and don't spend enough time inward. So just look at it. You know, they say that 80% of your thoughts are negative and 95% are repetitive. And this is called, you know, in, in neuroscience as the negativity bias, right? So most of it, you know, we keep looking, have you, and this is exactly what media does. Any headline and any news will always be something that's gonna stir the hornet's nest, right? They always look for an angle to give you something negative. Imran Khan's lost the election, there's a war. I mean, and most of the good is generally not put on the front lines, simply because they know that to get your attention, it's so much easier to say something negative. So it's just that we're born like that. And there's a, there's a reason for it, which I'll share with you. There's enough research in the world that says that the mind is distracted at least 47% of the time, which means more, almost half the time. And this is something called the default mode network, okay? Now, if your mind is, why, why are you sort of distracted? It's simply because 
you know, in the earlier days, and I'll, and I'll come to actually, when I come to the brain slide, I'll explain to you why this happens, right? Now we think multitasking is great, right? It helps us do 10 things at the same time, but every single research has, produced, you know, has proved that multitasking is a complete myth when it comes to doing serious work. If you're not doing serious work, which requires concentration and something really outstanding, you know, if, if you had a deal to go through or if you had uh, a big decision to make in life, it doesn't help. But yes, if you're just relaxing and you, you know, pass a message and your book, uh, you know, a uh, massage for yourself, you do all of that, that's also okay. But not when you're deep into concentration, because it takes almost 23 minutes to get back to the same level of concentration that you were at. So this is really the state of humanity, right? And guess what? Some of it is not your fault. If you go back and study the brain, this, the brain stem, which is the reptilian part of the brain is actually 250 million years old, okay? Then another emotional part of the brain got developed called the limbic system, which is about 150 million years. And the so-called cortex, which is the outer layer, is only about two, three million years, right? So tell me every time there's a reaction, what's going to win 250 million years or two to three million years? Now, no guesses on the, on, you know, looking at the numbers, but why is it, you know, if you look at it in the olden days when caveman was around, he had to survive every single day. So the brain is geared for survival for years and years and years. Do you see that, you know, in your own family, right? You may have a brother or whatever. Everyone's uh, mental makeup is different. Some people are genuinely more aggressive. Some people are a little more placid, right? You could have the same parents, the same food, the same everything. And I'm not getting into the, the spiritual explanations for that, but I'm just saying that the brain is wired to save you. So it helped you when you were dealing with tigers every single day. But it doesn't help today because you're not really living in that situation. So you always get hijacked by something called the amygdala hijack, right? This is to survive. You're constantly looking for, and that's why this distraction, that's why the default mode network that I spoke to you about. But what helps you take rational decisions is something called the prefrontal cortex, which is really the front portion of your cortex. This is where you take all your executive decisions for. So if you as a leader or you as somebody at the forefront of taking decisions, whether it's on the stock market, for your companies, for your, uh, you need to be in a state of mind where the reptilian brain, the emotional brain is a lot calmer. And you and I are in this executive state of mind, which is why people who are very emotionally charged, it's so easy to have a communal ride, right? You need to stir up something, how easy it is for us to get into taking sides or playing politics, right? Simply because you get wired to, for your own survival. But that's not very good. If for those of you who, you know, who invest in the stock market, you're aware that, you know, emotions don't always help you. In fact, that's something you need to keep at the, or any decision, you need to be very, very careful and balanced to make those decisions. And I think that's what leadership and executive is paid for sound decision-making, focus, being able to focus on what there is. And that's why, despite the fact that, you know, this is the way we're wired, uh, you know, is, is, so what can we do? Let's just look at one more slide. Because the brain is wired for safety, what it tends to make us do is to do repetitive actions. So if you're right-handed, chances are that you're always going to brush with your right hand in the morning, right? If you're used to taking a particular way to your office and you drive a particular path, you're going to keep doing that. Why? Because the brain wants to reduce. There are billions of transactions happening in your brain. But what happens is that the more we be on autopilot, okay, let's take a more familiar example at home. All of us who have spouses, right? There's some arguments that keep getting triggered. It could be about some somebody in the family, money, whatever. And everybody has their own thing. And despite you know 20 years of getting married you still go down with that path because you're wired to sort of react in that particular way and then we live 
in a VUCA world, right? It's volatile, it's uncertain, it's complex, and it's ambiguous. Nobody could have really predicted, you know, the, the war that's going on and what's going to happen or COVID, right? Nobody what is it for you? Sorry, what you said for you? VUCA world A for? Ambiguous. Volatile, ambiguous, okay. Uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. It's a term that emerged in the American army during the Second World War. And it just symbolizes the fast-paced world that's there. So along with you know, being in an autopilot repetitive mode, right? You go out for a walk, you forget looking at the trees or you, you know, whatever, right? You're, you're just walking, but your mind is somewhere else. So these are repetitive patterns in our life. So you have a VUCA world that's uncertain, that's all outside. But your brains are wired for negativity. And so we have something called an attention deficit today. Right? And our children even more. So all this doesn't really allow us to be as leaders, take decisions in the top frame of mind. And if you're a leader, actually what you're paid for, like I always say, is to take those decisions which have the best impact in life. And you could be a leader at life or at work. It doesn't matter. So here, let's just take a small mindfulness quiz that will help me give me an idea. There's no right or wrong answer. I can't see what you're answering. This is a group response. So I'm going to request my team to, to put the, the quiz. Uh, so here's the quiz. Just choose one. One point and uh, just choose one and submit. So can everybody take the quiz? I could. So all the all the yeah. audience, please participate in the quiz. So this is only one question, right? Yeah, that's, only one question. Right. Yes. One question. I just want to know what your impression of mindfulness is. So mindfulness is, you know, when your mind is full of thoughts, is it something religious? Is it the ability to be present? Is it the latest fad laugh? Is it for old people who have time and it's not for you? Or it's all <laughs> of the above? Are you all, all taking the quiz? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah, Submit it, yep. Yeah. OK, great. Can we share? Uh, is everybody I think done? Maybe just two more seconds we see. Yeah, like... yeah, sure, sure, sure. Because almost I see 36 have done 36. In the meantime, Mr. Madhud, do we have a choice uh, but to be multitasker nowadays? Okay, we'll come. That's a good question. So, like I said, when it's low-level tasks, uh, you know, in the sense which don't have a significant implication, right? Booking a movie, booking an app, Netflix, uh, booking a massage, you know, ordering some vegetables or, you know, answering some WhatsApp, etc. No problem. It's okay. Actually, I was having a debate uh, last week only uh, uh, was, uh, you know, I've seen recently many of the kids uh, listening to music while they are studying. And, and you know, e either doing an assignment or even reading. So honestly, that's beyond me. You know, I have never been able to concentrate reading if I'm hearing something else except for the lecture itself or related things. So I don't know why. Uh, at least this generation and many of the people by when you said that you know that that's what was going in my mind as well and that how do how do people do that you know or is it effective at all people find solace in music which i i can't relate to it when you are doing something serious yeah so the the research says very clearly and you know the top performers if you're working your best work comes when you are able to focus on what you're doing. So if you're writing a strategic paper, if you're taking, doing, you know, an m and deal, if you're doing, uh, basically, you know, I'm, I presume we're all talking to leaders who are paid to take some decisions which can change the future and the outcome. Yeah. So when you're doing a lot of thinking work, the best thing is not to, you know, is to actually keep your phone away. And there are many techniques that are there. You know, there's something called Pomodoro, which says work in 25 minutes and then take a break for five minutes. Work in 25 minutes and work. But the best people, 
you know, really, if you look at uh, Bill Gates, right, for two weeks, he'll just take away, go away into a, a wood, only books, no social media, no contact, Warren Buffet, very little, he only reads, he doesn't, he had, doesn't have anything, he lives in the same old house. I'm not saying you to be a hermit, all I'm saying is, when you're focusing on top-end work, at that point of time, to get the best outcome, just focus. I'm sure 25 minutes, unless you're in an emergency, you know, you're a doctor with, on emergency, 25 minutes you can give yourself at least to work on something. Because when you get out, you see the research, right? To get back to the same level of concentration takes almost 23 minutes. So you can get back. And, you know, not everything has to be answered, right? Not every joke has to be responded to. Not every comment on politics has to be responded to. You know, we say life is short, but we spend our time arguing on social media with strangers. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know, <laughs> doesn't help you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, Mudit, yeah, I think yeah. now, like, you can uh, yeah. uh, deep share the quiz results. Share the results. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so very truly, right? So we have 33% saying that the mind is full of thoughts, which is absolutely what the word says. So, you know, hats off to that. And it, it is one, somebody said, you know, latest fad and all of the above. And a very August audience here is, you know, and listened to Kala very clearly and says it is the ability to be present non-judgmentally. Okay, so what does that mean? Thank you so much for taking this quiz. Uh, but exactly as the word suggests. So let's just understand what the word suggests and I'll give you a little bit from the origins. So the origins of mindfulness or, you know, all these practices are come from spiritual uh, practices. So this one in particular is, is something that comes out of Buddhism. And in its about 800 years after Buddha was born, somebody documented a lot of these things, a monk called Asangaha. And then it spread to China. So Dhyan in India went to China as Chen. And by the time it reached Japan, it became Zen. And then it came right back. And for a while, this whole Vipassana technique was actually present only in Burma. And Mr. Goenka was one of those guys who brought it back to India. Okay. So that's the, uh, and if you've ever been to a Vipassana retreat, uh, you know, I'm not sure many of you would have been, but it's 10 days of absolute silence. So that's the, uh, you know, the initial, that was what they tried to condense. But now, what happened was when some of these Zen monks were there in the US, uh, I was just sharing with the group, some people picked it up and there was this guy called John Kabat-Zinn. He was an MIT microbiologist and he got influenced by these Zen teachings and he started the first MBSSR program, a mindfulness-based stress relief program. And what he found was that he was able to use these techniques to help people recover from deep trauma, from deep stress, from people who were there and then it just became popular and today it's you know google has uh, the guy on the extreme right is a guy called meng chang tan he google you know produced this program and it's become like a worldwide hit and then you have daniel goldman who talks about emotional intelligence so now the version that's come out is packaged you know so a lot of it is basic original truths but people don't want to be religious in some ways and so they want to say it's very, uh, you know, it's non-religious, it's got nothing to do, but the roots and the behavior are there. So, and I really thank America for this because you give them a word like yoga and they'll market it and create a whole billion dollar industry around it, right? You give them, you know, haldi has been used in our heritage for years, but turmeric latte is, is cool, right? So until it goes there, it doesn't come back and we don't pick it up. So I'm glad that somebody's taken the mantle. Okay, so with that, I'm just going to go on and let's come to what mindful is and what it isn't. Okay, so firstly, what is isn't? I mean, it's not, it's not difficult, but it's not like easy in the sense that for anything in life, you've got to do a little bit of work, right? It's not a quick fix. It's not saying that you've got to empty your mind out of thoughts. No, that's never going to happen so long as you live in the world, right? It doesn't say that you're going to stop thinking and it's no form of escapism from the world, but it's a little skill. And like they say, you know, if you go to the gym, every mindfulness 
or every uh, let's say dumbbell curl that you do improves the strength of your muscle. Similarly, every breath you take and concentrate on helps you build your mindfulness muscle, right? It gradually rewires your brain. So if you remember the slide on the three brains and why we're wired for uh, safety, security, it can actually wire, rewire your brain to be, make it, instead of being negative, make it a little positive. It can help you understand the nature of your thoughts. It can help you observe. See, the problem is not that we have thoughts. The problem is when this thought comes, then our emotions get attached to it. And for the next few minutes, we're gone. So if you're operating from the anxiety or regrets of the past and the anxiety of the future, you're going to be gone for a long, long time, which is why you have these imaginary fights. You have this videotape playing in your head and then you become a part of it. But with this training, what it will do is that it'll allow you to say, oh God, you know what? Now this thought has come and I don't have to get blown away with this thought. It's okay. You're there. I'm watching you. So you don't get involved and then you don't get hijacked. And therefore you're able to concentrate. You're able to do things that you're meant to do with a lot of love, kindness, focus, and attention. Okay. So this is just a brief thing and I'll now get into a definition, right? So John Kabat-Zinn, who was like this MIT guy who made it very popular. And this is the definition from him. And he says, the awareness, right, from paying attention on purpose. So there's an intention to pay attention, right? In the present moment, non-judgmentally, right? So what is it? You know, we are all born with this awareness. As a child, a child or a baby is full of enthusiasm or full of, you know, uh, love and affection, etc., till he gets becoming an adult. Right, And our attention keeps getting scattered. So it's a question of training our attention. So today, if it's like a couple of seconds, right, it was not always like that. It's because you're looking at the phone, you're looking at your laptop, you're looking, answering something. You've, we've trained it to be non-attentive. But what if we could train our mind back to its original nature? See, the original nature of every soul or this is to be joyful, is to be happy, is to be attentive. But we go away from that and, you know, we dissipate this attention into so many things, right? So the breath is one thing which will help you come back to your attention. And therefore, he says, either the breath or the body. So by focusing on the breath, the idea is to cultivate attention in the body and mind in a moment to moment, right? And so help with pain, both physical. See, in life, there's a saying. If you have a fracture, you have an accident. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is not. What is the difference between pain and suffering? Somebody, let's say, for example, you did something wrong. I'm going to take just a very simple example. Your teacher slapped you when you were in school because you were bunking. If you're the kind of guy who says, yeah, it's okay, I bunked and you know, that's the end of it. But if you're going to carry today, 20, 30 years later down, what happened in the past? And all of us really punish ourselves for a lot of things. Something may have happened in the past, some abuse, some neglect, something, somebody said something to you. And we are, you know, we're 30 years more mature, or we took a decision which was immature 20 years ago. Fine. That decision was taken at that level of maturity, not today. So why are you punish punishing yourself with today? How many of you honestly can say that there's something that you keep thinking about, some regret, something somebody said, anybody, just, just, just you know, you can just put your hand up and, and if there's nobody, then I'll be really surprised. But if there is, if you're honest. Yeah, that is that, that, is that common with everyone, Mudit. Even maybe the span of time may vary, right? Some may think for a day, some yeah. may think for a week, depends on the relationship. So, and depends on the person who told you. Yeah. So what happens is, see, let's look at it. Why do they keep talking about the present? The past is dead. There's nothing you can do about it. The future is unborn, right? So there's frankly nothing you can do about it. The only thing you can do is take action today. The action that you take today, the quality of that action is going to determine the future that you're going to. It's going to make every tomorrow a day to look up, look up to. And every yesterday, a memorable day. 
But we're so lost in either of these two spheres that we don't take action in, in the present, right? So does do people, does a you know, procrastination, that's why it happens, okay? So Joe what, hai, bas yehi ek pala hai. Sorry? Sorry, I, it reminded me of the song that you said. Jo bhi hai, bas yehi ek pala hai. <laughs> so true. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So there are just five core components. One is awareness that we all have, that we're all born with. It's our birthright, but we lose, right? When you have awareness, you're able to pay attention. And when you live in the present, you accept things that may have happened. And when you're non-judgmental, then, okay, you know, somebody is a Modi, I mean, I've seen families falling apart, Modi versus anti-Modi, friends falling apart, WhatsApp groups, you know, people leaving, fighting, shouting, screaming. It's a, I mean, everybody has an opinion. It doesn't matter, right? What about the most important things of our life? Bother about that. And the essence is that every human being has choice. You know, your choice of action is going to determine the choice of result that's going to happen tomorrow. Okay. So this is what we talked about. So the word actually says mindful, right? Almost 33% said that, oh, but there's a difference in the L's, right? In mindful, there are two L's. So basically, this is the normal person, right? With a lot of thoughts in his head. Whereas somebody who's present in the moment is going to concentrate on what's going to happen. Okay, so I've just given you an office situation where we very often take off. Somebody's presenting, and you know, so long as it, and then some thought comes and you're gone, right? You've lost a few minutes. Or let's say you're on a good beach, right? If you look at it, the dog that you have is just so happy being with your master. Any one of you who has a pet will realize that when you come back home, the dog is just, he doesn't care. You come back home, and that's all that matters. Whereas a lot of us could be in the most beautiful places, but we're still stuck somewhere in the past or the future, and we don't enjoy the lovely breeze or, you know, whatever else. So it could be at work. I've given you a situation at work, and just to re-emphasize what being mindful of thoughts is and mindful, which is really being present. And here's a quote from Viktor Frankner, okay? He was an Auschwitz survivor. He survived. He lost his parents. He lost his family. He lost everybody. And he survived for 20, 30 years. And he, when he was asked, you know, what is it that really, I mean, how did you manage this? And he said, see, between every stimulus or response from outside, there is a space. And in that space lies our power to choose our response. And in our response lies our growth to freedom. So even though I was humiliated, even though I was, you know, my family was killed in front of me, I had a choice. And I chose that I'm going to continue living and I'm going to be purposeful and I'm going to come out of this somehow. And this is very powerful because it brings us to a situation that happens across in all our life. And let's just look at this whole stimulus response theory, which is any event or any stimulus, right? There's a war going on, there's an election, somebody loses an election, you know, you get, uh, you take sides, there's politics happening. So there's stimulus and there's an event. Somebody speaks rudely to you, right? Now you have three choices. If you've had an abusive childhood or whatever, and if somebody says something to you, some of us just tend to withdraw because, you know, guess what? We don't want to cause a fight. But guess what? This also has a consequence. You may have evolved or stopped a fight, but if you're in, let's say, an abusive marriage or an abusive relationship, or you have an abusive boss, right? And we might have all have encountered one or many of these. Just keeping quiet doesn't always help, but, and, you know, we tend to withdraw and some people lose uh, the zest of life. Or you can react and have a big fight, right? Great. There's nothing wrong with anger so long as you express anger for the sake of something right. But if you're the kind of guy who's very hyper and always picking fights, you won't have very good relationships. Uh, sorry, Mudit, if I interrupt you. You said it's okay to react, is it? See, the question is, I'm saying that the situation demands... Okay, let me just be completely non-judgmental. I'm saying you have three options. You can choose. Uh, so if you withdraw there's a consequence. If you react, let's say, for example, uh, and we come down to this whole question that we were talking in the morning, right? What's the right thing to do? 
you will take action if there is somebody trying to harm you or your family right but and you might have to say something or you might have to defend but don't let that become a pattern of your life right because if you always react without thinking as to you know maybe your spouse says something or your boss says something and you don't like it you always the arguing type it's not going to help you that's all i'm saying okay and then you have the choice to respond what does respond mean it just means that for any stimulus or event just take a moment don't react don't just you know somebody says something and, and let's say the best thing is you know let's look at all let's be honest with all our spouses there there are a couple of items which we always have this little sparring session right if you spend 20 years getting married but some of those arguments still continue right that's just you're working on autopilot you know somebody says something somebody is touchy about something but if you're able to pause then you might just make an optimal decision right the stock market tanks what do you do do you sell or do you have the ability to hold on because you know that for every fall that's happened in the stock market it does bottom out but in the long run it will pick up so if you borrowed a lot of money and you know you done all those things and you get out that's a different thing but if you're a long term investor and you've gone through a couple of these cycles you probably know that look it's okay it's gone down today but give it a few months it'll come back so i'm just giving you examples of where you have three choices and you may choose to withdraw some but everything has a consequence i am only telling you to be present take a little pause before you know you're letting your amygdala really hijack you right i mean you see a tiger you have three things to do fight flight or freeze right so this is how we are wired but if you take a moment to respond we're not living in the jungle anymore you might just be able to take decisions which are of a higher quality that's the point that i'm i'm making i don't know if i've answered you kala is it we we no, have that, that's fine exactly because uh, many of this you were speak uh, you know mentioning about the yoga or the spiritual thing so what they preach is not to react and over the time you start responding right so since i saw this in the slide that's what my question you you, you clarified it because we don't need to react every time so you start responding it yeah yeah i mean yeah go on somebody else or a lighter note sir uh, there is a fourth way also when when you see the tiger do nothing because the uh, tiger is in the cage so <laughs> so, so true so true <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so we're just looking, and I'm just going to ask you, right? Just look at your own thing and take a minute and just do an exercise for yourself. You don't have to tell me if you want to share and you're brave enough. That's fine. Where do you need to practice the pause in your life? Is it professionally? Is it in some relationship? Are you so driven by food that you can't stop yourself? Do you make impulsive financial decisions? is it some something that you've been neglecting or is it some belief that you have that's been just take a minute and write down for yourself where do you need to practice the pause everywhere okay so it it's a great it's just a way you know to become more aware and that's why i'm if you want to take 30 seconds you can just for your own self or we can continue i think 30 seconds like okay. this is a good good slide mental note of this is good uh, but um, and i i don't want to impose anybody you know with, with uh, my thought but thanks yeah this is a good introspection good one for because sure. yeah yeah it's a I, good I, very nice uh, mudit let me know when you guys are done and we'll continue yeah you can continue after yeah, uh, 10 seconds yeah, can you please explain what is what do you mean by limiting beliefs okay see a limiting belief is you know when we were growing up right uh i don't know about you but you know parents let's say have a tendency to say compare you look at yeah. that boy look at your neighbor look at your cousin how bright he is right and maybe you were the one who was the benchmark right so sometimes this comparison tells us in life some people believe oh maybe we're not that intelligent okay or see what happens is when you are let's say between the age of 0 to 7 what tends to happen is that you don't have the power really to judge or to take you're dependent on your parents you 
your ability. So you get a lot of, let's say in India, right? Let's say, for example, if most of us have a Indian, some sort of an Indian background, you know, money doesn't grow on trees, right? Or rich people are always, uh, you know, uh, are crooks. It's fine, yeah. Right? So what happens is that your relationship with money gets affected because you think that making money is bad. Now, nowhere in the scriptures or anything they've said that making money is bad. But what they do say is make money, but do it in a dharmic way, which means you don't have to make money by stealing or by, you know, uh, killing somebody or taking it. But you earn an honest living. There's nothing wrong in making money. Yeah? But we grow up with all these, you know, limiting beliefs. I'm not good enough. You know, uh, maybe I'm not smart enough. I'm not good looking enough. I'm not physically uh, fit. Or I'm not... self guilt for whatever. Reasons. Yeah, it's, it's something in your mind which limits yeah. you from really achieving your potential. So it's time to take stock. Okay, so I'll just continue because... Yeah. Right. So is everybody a little clearer on what is mindfulness? And maybe I can, you know, continue with what are the implications on leadership? Yeah, you can. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? So we'll finish one section and now we'll move on. So the first thing I'm going to do is a something called a leader exercise. Okay. And just take about two minutes and just, I'm going to request you if you can for a moment. Just close your eyes, okay? And just focus on your breath. Breathe in silently. What's the quality of your breath? Is it thick? Is it thin? Is it fast? Is it slow? Is your mind wandering? It's okay. Gently ask it to come back and focus on your breath. Breathe in joy, breathe out sadness. Breathe in good health, breathe out ill health. Let your breath settle down at its normal space. Don't try and rush it. And now I want to ask you to go back and think about some leader in your life, in your personal life or at work that you admire or even outside in the world. What kind of a leader was he? What do you like about him? What touched you? Was it values? Was it behavior? Anything that touched you? Just try and think of that. How did that person make a significant impact? Gradually, if you finish this exercise and you've got just one word, I don't want many, much more, just one word. Come back, open your eyes. Anybody wants to share what, what came to your mind? Courage. Courage, okay. Determination. Walk. Determination. Walk the talk. Sorry? Walk the talk. Walk the talk, right? Basically, somebody whose behavior and action was... was Taking similar. responsibility. Taking empathy. responsibility. Yeah. Empathy is what I valued in the leader. Yeah. Determination. Fine. So we have determination. We have basically qualities. Anybody else who wants to share? Anybody else? Any other word that came to your mind? Uh, there are somebody who has shared in the chat. Will Authenticity, power. listen, willpower, non-judgmental. Non Okay. And integrity, you can say. Empathy. Empathy, integrity. Okay. So did you hear? Nobody, if you look at all the words, nobody said you should be a CA or an MBA. Nobody said whether you went to an Ivy League school. Nobody said that, you know, he's very good at managing the board. 
nobody said he's great at politics because truthfully none of these things really make an impact but what makes an impact on people and their lives and the lives that you touch all of us here today have a responsibility because we lead both at work and at home at home we are a leader for your your children right you set the tone of the family the way you behave the way you act and guess what none of it none of your education matters none of your position matters because all of you what did you say empathy determination courage and these are the things that you all all of us need to be mindful of and this is what mindfulness can help you right it doesn't matter whether you went to an ivy league whether you came from an affluent family whether you had power and position did anybody mention that you talked about behavior walk the talk you talked about determination you talked about courage these are all human values and we very often you know in times when we are put in terms of you know a situation some of us tend to actually not walk the talk some of us don't have that courage to stand up for what's right if i protected myself why do i need to uh you know who cares right so we aren't truly really being great leaders but but by being and practicing mindfulness when you're present when you know what's happening when you don't react and you respond in life and you take the right decision that you think needs to be taken in line with your values see sometimes we get angry and we don't even know when we're getting angry and it you know we say something really nasty and especially to those we love outside we try and behave ourselves because we'll get two slaps right but our spouse and our children are not going anywhere so hopefully right so we tend to behave in ways either at home or at work and sometimes we do things which are a little out of line and mindfulness will allow you to become aware so when you are getting these emotions you are able to detect oh god i am getting angry now maybe i need to cool myself maybe i shouldn't say that sometimes you feel right it came till here i was about to say this and then i kept quiet if it was a nasty thing it better you kept quiet because sometimes once the words are said you can't take them back right but in other situations when you have to say and make yourself heard in a you know work environment or whatever please do it but that awareness is what we're talking about and that's where mindfulness comes in right so mindfulness begins with the mind of the leader why because unless you're able to control your thoughts and emotions the way you behave and the way you lead your team will determine the culture of your team the way your team and many teams work as leaders will determine the culture of an organization right that's why peter drucker said culture eats strategy for breakfast you can make any strategy but if people you want to you know you 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 all of us write these major strategy and vision statements but if your behavior doesn't match that how are you going to go and that's where it begins and therefore being able to control your mind is very important in the sense of being able to control your emotions taking rational decisions using your prefrontal cortex optimally but to make that available you need to practice mindfulness so typically you know when you talk of mindfulness and a mindful leader it's based a lot of emotional intelligence how aware are you of your own emotions so there's you know four parts if i was to just say one is self awareness right how aware of you of yourself what's going on are you able to stop yourself when you get angry are you you know that you're going to get emotional are you able to observe these things or are you a loose cannon you know a bull in a china shop wherever you go you create problems you say things you're whatever i'm i'm just taking to extremes but then how are you able to lead yourself see the fact that you're a human being means that you are going to have some you're going to face some adversity some challenge in life and everybody's path is different so don't judge them but how do you supposing your spouse has cancer your parents have cancer how do you deal with it you know you lose your job for whatever you get caught in a scam you get framed i mean whatever the situation is and above all right we all work for a living but is that something that we're truly enjoying 
Then our ability to work with teams, right? We talk about courage. Somebody talked about empathy, right? And then the organization, how do you lead? Yeah. What is it that you want to, that you do? So these are four parts essentially, which we cover over a two day program. So what is self-awareness? Awareness of your own thoughts, right? So we said, remember if you're 80% of your thoughts are negative. If you are going through some argument in your mind or something that's getting you down, or let's say COVID, right? A lot of people went through because we're unable, those who are unable to control their thoughts and they just run wild will take you down the tube. And I always say the richest piece of real estate is the six inches you have between your ears. How you live here, it affects the perception of how you live in the world. What, you, what is going on here determines whether life is good, happy, sad, same, same situation. Some of it managed much better, some of it couldn't because some people are unable to detect when these thoughts come because they haven't practiced, they haven't done any attention training. They just go with emotion, right? Emotion, and we talked about repetitive behavior, right? Having the same arguments, having the same thing, reacting the same way the stock market works, reacting the same way, you know, things, we don't stop ourselves. And, you know, there's probably not enough time, but when we do, when I do a two day, you do a lot of exercises where you, you, you come into, how is this affecting you, right? So self-leadership, right? Uh, and, you know, how do you, are you sort of living your purpose, right? Are you able to become resilient? What is resilience here? Your ability to bounce back, right? So if you allow that situation or incident to sort of put you down and you're not able to get up, then it's just going to take you longer, right? How are you able to manage stress? Everybody has a different... Uh, uh, Okay. Team awareness, your ability. Somebody you talked about courage and empathy. And these, this is how you work with people, right? You work so hard with your team. You drive them up the wall. If somebody's having a bad day, you, you know, really insult them or you check. Maybe you don't know. It, you know, something's not going well in their personal life or somebody's not well. Those days are gone when we were growing up and we didn't have the courage to say a word. Today's generation doesn't listen, right? And you know that with your own children. If you have adult children and you know that there are times, you know, where uh, your word doesn't always sort of tend to work, right? But being compassionate, you know, taking a lot, just being able to understand, right? So how do you work in meetings, right? All this makes you a much better leader. Are you a real like nasty kind of guy who put your team under the, you know, under the bus just to save yourself? You can do that as a leader once, but you're not going to have very much respect. What's the kind of psychological safety? See, unless you come from a space of security, you're not going to be able to create psychological safety in, a, in an organization. And this is proof that the best work happens when people feel safe, that they know they're not going to be, you know, today people wear failure like a badge. Why? It's okay to fail, man. You, you tried hard. You Maybe not our culture, but look at the next, uh, you know, do you have purpose and do you, does your organization have purpose, right? But for this, these questions, you have to be, uh, you know, you have to be able to introspect before you're able. So I just covered a few things. And, you know, I've developed a, a sort of proprietary model, which on how do we get people? So basically, I'm saying you already have awareness in this app model. And what you need to do is you need to train that awareness. You need to train your attention knowing and based on neuroscience, right? I talked to you about your brain, your prefrontal cortex, knowledge and then you can actually rewire your brain so if you're somebody who takes maybe you're passive in some areas but you're aggressive right some people are very cool but they're very aggressive on the stock market and sometimes you take decisions which are rash the ability to practice the pause right and if you're able to do these parts by training your mind to live in the present to pick chances are that you're going to be present which means you're going to take the best decisions okay and this is what we do in the training. So how do you train, right? So like I was saying, one bicep curl makes your physical muscles strong. One focus on breath makes your mindful muscles strong. It trains by focusing on your breath or sound or touch. 
or any of these things you're able to, and I'll, I'll give you a little demonstration you know, in a while. Yeah. So what's my full form of present? P for purpose, R for resilience, E for empathy, S for living a stress-free life, E for engaged employees, N for no devices, making time for that, and T for teamwork, right? Just an acronym from using the word present. And what have the results generally been? You know, this has been done in many, uh, many organizations. And I'm just quoting from, let's say, this is a study from Ian Y. After people began doing mindfulness training for eight weeks, which is five minutes a day, right? There was a 14% increase in job satisfaction. 39% said they have more energy. 21% said that the concentration improved because they started rumen. 24% said they could think more clearly. 33% greater sense of compassion for their team. And 30% said, so it's not about the numbers. All it's saying is that it's been tried and tested with partners at that level. It's tried and tested with thousands of Googlers all around the world. And the results are always encouraging. So there must be something in it. Right. So the way I look at it from a leadership perspective, right, focus is your single largest asset. You know, if where attention goes, energy flows. Look at that part of your life where you give attention and you'll see blossom. Right. Clarity. What is important now? At this time, not one day later, all of us have a whole stack of priorities. Right? And they've done all creativity studies have revealed. It doesn't come from just thinking and sitting and working. The best ideas come to you when you're on the pot or you're sitting in, on a walk. You know, you're sitting on a lake and something comes to your mind. If you look at it, the greatest ideas, the benzene molecule by KQ was discovered in his, he had a dream, right? When you have Archimedes driving, running naked in the thing, saying, Eureka, Eureka, he was having a bath. When the apple fell on Newton's head, it was not that he was sitting on a desk and chair. But we're so busy thinking and we're so full of thoughts that we don't have time or space for innovation. You know, so if you practice this, all of it, and of course, compassion, you know, for others and most importantly for yourself. I work with a lot of CEOs across the world, okay? And I can tell you, every single person, any achiever in life, let me tell you, if you are an achiever in life, you are probably very tough on your own self. You know why? You beat yourself because you feel that if I don't work and I don't do, you know, my CA and I don't pass and I'm not in that 2% and I'm not better than this, I won't be able to do well. Nothing wrong in working hard. But don't beat yourself for mistakes all the time. How many of you, be honest, you beat yourself in something? Any, anybody who's willing to say, any hands up? Anybody who's tough on ourselves? Okay. I'm sure some of you will feel that. And, you know, uh, okay. So why practice mindfulness, right? From a, uh, are you okay? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So just let me know how are we doing on time so then I can... Yeah, uh, fine. Like, I think we can go for another 10 minutes, Mudit. Okay, quick. Okay. So quick ones. Personally, helps you regulate emotion better, reduces stress, increase. I've already gone through a lot of it, right? And at work and leadership. So there are benefits both in your personal life as well as your professional life. So just a few tips for mindful living just to break the automated patterns, try and brush with your left hand, okay? Just do something different so that your mind, because when you do something different, you'll find, or write with your left hand, if you're a right hander, right? Make sure there's some, you know, a lot of us go out with our spouses and family and then everybody out for a dinner, but people are busy texting. No phones allowed. That's one of the things that I, I've told my family. You want to go out, we go out to talk to each other. Spend a little time in nature. Forest walking is a big tradition in Japan, right? You're sitting right now on your chair. Can you, uh, you know, if you want, just what is the sensation of your feet on the floor? Is the floor cold? Are your feet tired? 
in between meetings, you carry your breath with you, right? Just focus on your breath. You'll be surprised the how centered you can get. And of course, changing your perspective, right? Living in gratitude. How grateful are you for all the things that you have? Abundance mindset. It's not a zero sum game in life. Everybody, it's not about me winning or somebody else losing. The interconnected world. If we believe that we and our environment is connected, and you don't, and we stop ravaging and spoiling nature and you know the amount of fumes that are there, right? You will the wars in the next century are going to be fought on water, on food. Because we're just destroying and you wouldn't have had COVID. This is nature's response to you upsetting the balance. Okay. So accepting, uh, okay, before I don't want to get philosophical because this can go on. And I just want to check with you. Okay, one last thing, you know, if you look at this is Dr. Hawkins energy scale and it says you're at your highest level of your energy when you're in a peaceful state, a joyful state, a love, reason, acceptance, willingness, and you're in your worst energy states of shame, guilt, apathy. Now, the choice is yours, right? Again, I, you can't change the events that have happened in your life, but you can change the way you respond. You can choose to live in a higher energy zone or lower energy zone. Are you guys okay to practice a few minutes of a mindfulness meditation just to get a feel of what it is? Yes, that will be great. Yeah, is everybody okay? Nothing, no hocus focus, just a few minutes. Okay, so what I'm going to request you is gently, we'll go back and do a little bit of what, but a little more. Okay, so I'm going to request you to gently close your eyes. And if you, or if you find it difficult to close your eyes, basically put your eyelids down and look just at your feet. Sit comfortably in your chair. And feel the sensation on your feet, feel on the floor. How much have you sunk into the chair? Put your hands outward and see the energy from the universe.
Anybody would like to share how they felt? Yeah, for, for quite a few seconds, the mind went actually thoughtless. Only uh, when, when you give commands, thank your uh, uh, children, thank your family, thank your investor, then again it came back. It starts, it just started thinking about them. And uh, definitely it was coming because when you when you do not have many, many thoughts uh, circulating in your mind, it goes in a relaxed mode. And maybe later on you can give greater focus. Hmm. Very good. Any I more? tried to avoid uh, your instruction in order to remain totally yes. thoughtless. So Very I was in a state of uh, zero thinking for at least, uh, I think about 40, 40 uh, maybe about one minute, 10, 20, 30 seconds, yeah. Then something in between came. Again, I consciously tried to go into zero mode uh, to constantly watch on my forehead that no thought is coming, nothing is happening. I'm just simply looking into the vacuum. That's, that remained my time. Okay. But anybody else? Uh, actually, you know, to be honest, I was initially, uh, you know, in that uh, zero thought mode. And but then, you know, I started to concentrate as to what is being said. The, the audio voice uh, was probably a distraction for me. Okay. Uh, because I started to concentrate there as to what the instructions are. Okay. And, you know, then to get back to the zero thought mode was a struggle for me. I was getting in and out, shorter spans, but I do not know whether that's that's my basic nature. I'm not very proud of my short span. Uh, probably that that is what it was, but I do see one of the comments and, you know, I'm getting relieved from, from the comment that, you know, uh, this message is from Sujata Rao to say that uh, too many thoughts were coming. So, you know, probably 
uh, similar was my situation uh, later on. No, no, absolutely. So see, but but had it been just music, Mudit, uh, just just as a feedback, I do not know yeah. uh, what would it be for others. Had it been just music uh, going on without the audio, uh, mean, perhaps perhaps I would have been able to concentrate, you know, off and on. But I would have done better. Is, is what my personal sure, sure, response sure. would be. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Mudit, I want to tell you, Pawan said, right, uh, he had this debate of music listening. It's actually like we both were discussing because I said when I read or study, I need to listen to music all the time. Mm. Okay, so to me, I felt this music is very soothing, calming your mind. Yeah, yeah. Right. Can I share my experience? Yeah, 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 please. Yeah, yeah. So, you have to go on first. Uh, nothing. I just wanted to say that I agreed with Pawan Preet that the music was nice, but when uh, Mudit was speaking, then I was trying to concentrate to listen to him speaking, and I thought it was uh, something wrong with my audio, that it was all coming when the, a bit disturbed, so that yeah, was yeah. a bit distracting. Okay. Very good. No, there's nothing right or wrong, and you're all yeah. perfectly okay. Uh, you know, as uh, anybody else, anything, anybody avoiding, <laughs> anybody, did it help you? Calm down, did it help? Yeah, you? yeah, Mudit. So I was telling, I'm just sharing my experience. So it was really, I had a zero thought. And then it was, um, then there was some, uh, music was really relaxing. Actually, I enjoyed the music. And, but there was some audio, uh, I mean, uh, very faint, which I could not really, you know, uh, understand what is. So I just focused on my breath. And then I was just uh, visualizing some ocean waves and it was very calming for me so i just did not pay attention to what was spoken about and so i good, just focused good, good, on my breath so basically anybody else wants to share before we go ahead uh, focus on breath is the main main uh, idea about your teaching first line first step you have told in the stanza i pick up so concentrating on the breath it's good. Thank you. Okay. Good. So see, basically, it doesn't, whatever works for you, if there's no right or wrong in this, okay? So if you're able to focus on the breath and it, you know, you don't even need instructions, that's very good. So people are at different levels, you know? So this is done. And, you know, guess what? You may not have, when you're in office, you may not have some a voice that's instructing you. Right? Just you carry your breath with you. Just carry it. Just focus on it. You know, and and that's all. It's just an inward journey. Okay, and it's very important to keep centering yourself. So breath is the best way to center yourself. Just by focusing. Imagine you're sitting outside a dentist, or you're sitting outside your boss's room for a meeting. Right? Just taking a few deep breaths. It's going to center you. It's going to get you into a much better state of mind to be able to. Uh, you don't. Some people need music. Some people need instruction. There's nothing right or wrong. Okay, so choose. Do something that suits you. And it's very difficult when you're in this world here to have, you know, to really be thoughtless. That's a bit difficult to. Uh, so it's okay. Basically, accept it. But just focusing your attention basically is training your mind to be able to concentrate, okay? So just coming in here and I'll wrap up, Kala, you want me to wrap up? I can- Yeah, yes, please. Uh, yeah. yeah. So what we'll do is we'll just, this is a very large topic. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just stop sharing and uh, maybe if there are any questions or anything that you know anybody has, I'll be happy to, to answer. Uh, one question, uh, Mr. Mudir. See, is it not all about the expectations uh, th that we struggle to meet while we do all this multitasking, while while we allow the, all the thoughts to come? Because uh, uh, especially the family men, yes, they have different set of expectations from uh, yes. each side of their family. People uh, who who live a separate life, they have different set uh, set of expectations playing on their mind. So is it not all about expectations that drive us, uh, drive our thoughts, so many thoughts in our minds and how to manage them? Okay. So am I, uh, if just to be clear on the question, are you saying how do you manage your expectations or are you uh, saying that there are expectations and there are too many thoughts, how do you manage them? 
no not my expectation people have expectation from yes, me yes, yes so and 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 i have to live uh, to, to their expectations and there are, there are so many expectations at the same time yes yes so if you're specifically if you're in an indian family uh, you know or let's say i wouldn't say indian but it's oriental right we have a stronger family structure etc so there are expectations you know but the thing is the only thing is to live up to those expectations you can only take action in the present you know that's the thought that i'm going to leave with you and all of us can only do our best if other people are constantly getting you don't have to define your self worth by the way everybody else thinks about you so long as you're doing something right right everybody's abilities are different if you start comparing or any one of us starts comparing are look how rich uh, bill gates or uh, elon musk or whatever it is you'll always see the glass is half empty in your life right so the whole thing is that if you are feeling let's say i and i understand where you're coming from perhaps there are times when you feel that oh god people are expecting so much and i'm not being able to live up to that right your spouse has expectations your kid has expectations your parents have expectations you do your best after that you know be conscious of this you know that this comparison is coming in or you feel inadequate if you are going to get stuck with that that oh what will other people say you won't be able to take action even when you are what you have to do you know in our in any all the scriptures or whatever all everybody says is boss you take action you do what's in your hand you cannot control the environment you cannot control uh, anybody saying anything but can you manage your the 6 inches between your uh, ears because if you can manage that then that will determine the quality of your life so madad uh, madad uh, yes, uh, sorry just link to what uh, uh, a couple is saying and uh, you know uh, and, and extending it further probably yeah uh, you know mindfulness uh, is something what i'm i'm looking at is a, it's got a lot of similarity to spirituality in in a way yes. all right so so if spirituality was so easy and uh, so you know could be tailored scientifically probably the world would have been spiritual much earlier you know all of us you know we, we are all striving in our own little way i understand you know it's it's a scientific way consciously working towards it uh, but um, it's is far much easier said than done i'm i'm deliberately being a devil's advocate out here to to you know probably you know dig in further as to what Uh, as a uh, as as a listener over here the group over here probably would want to take away you know that that's that's what what i'm trying to struggle and that that thought has come across many a times when you were saying uh, you know you you respond not react you live at present you don't talk of you know you you let go what what has happened or for what just couple mentioned about expectations from others and and you were giving your best you know all all these things probably would lead to spirituality right yeah uh, it's your right pavan i mean let's look at it this way right uh, and people's definition of spirituality differs but you're talking about that spirit that's the way i look at it that relies within you right nobody said life was easy i think all those people who fail ca exam and you're the lucky 2% no you got through in india right so all those 98% that didn't get through are in the same thing of saying boss it's ca is very difficult it's not possible but some of you did get through so it's possible some people put in a little effort right now there are you have two choices one is you can say boss i am not going to do ca at all then there are consequences for every action there's a consequence all i am saying to you i am not saying life whoever said life was easy and you know uh, I, i the last video that uh, kala had commented this is something that buddha said you know and all the spiritual if you come to this world you come to experience karma and to suffer and to learn and that's why you come to this world otherwise if you were beyond uh, any lessons that you had to learn you wouldn't have come no you would have gone and mixed straight with the cosmos <laughs> i'm just you know I'm, i'm just trying you know the whole principle of birth and rebirth is based on this right every action has a reaction 
Correct. So today, if you're the lucky guy who lives in Singapore, who is a CA pass of that 2% of India, right? And you're blessed and you have everything. There are a lot of people who don't have what you have. So they can say, why be a Pavan Preetya? Are kuchni hone wala hai. Bahut difficult hai. That's the easier way. I'm not saying life is, everybody has to make some effort in some part of your life. For some people, you know, they come to this earth to take lessons on, they're poor, right? What can you tell a baby who's born with some kind of a, uh, you know, disadvantage? It's not the baby's fault, right? But TK, that's the way life is. You have to move whichever. All I'm saying to you is, and this is not mindfulness, but this is more a spiritual discussion. My take is, you know, you just have to move ahead from whatever you have and make the most of the life that you can. And um, Mudit, if may add to what you explained now, this in the last uh, 60 minutes or 75 minutes session, uh, also answering the Bhavan's point. As you said, is you can see whatever he says, like, how will you manage the expectations? Or we are trying our best, right? See, all this, yes, you don't react, respond, but this all cannot happen immediately. It is like by practicing. Yeah. Uh, it is, and as he, as he said, we can control ourselves, but we cannot control others. And I think he said the best person he has to is who is sound and can make decision. Yes, there are, they, we are doing the best, but we cannot meet the expectations of everyone, but do what is right. And it, it is all has to come in practice even spirituality i think uh, it, it cannot be over a night you know you can become spiritual but also need practice of course of course that does uh, right it and uh, see and uh, multitasking i think we also discussed and recently i read in linkedin see multitasking it's not only for a man it's also a woman when there are multiple jobs to be done and it's also about prioritizing what needs to be done first So I think very well summarized, Kala, but the only thing is, look, we all know life is not easy. We're on this journey. So problems, you didn't talk about that the excellent video of yours. Uh, you know, yeah, problems so, or challenges. So we do exist with problems. You know, I mean, uh, let's do all of, all of us can do a little bit, you know, as much, right? That's all you can do. Work hard, take your best. Uske baad, you know, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, life is not easy, but you still go on, right? That's all I would like to say. I mean, it's not an argument. All I'm saying is I accept and I agree with you that life is tough. For some of us, some parts of our life are tougher. For others who didn't get through CA, life is very, very tough. I'm just using a, a, an analogy just because I'm addressing chartered accountants and it's such a privilege to be a chartered accountant. You know, you got it easy this side, but you may not get it easy in some other area of your life. And uh, expectations are there. Can you change everybody? You can't. You can't take the onus. Can you change the way your boss thinks? Can you change the way your CEO thinks? Can you change the way the government thinks? Or the you know, if you go to a place which is very uh, you know full of, I mean, racial discrimination, can you change the color of your skin? You can't. You do what you have to do. But guess what? The head of Google is an Indian. The head of Microsoft is an Indian, right? The head of Twitter is an Indian. I mean, I don't have to go on. Despite whatever limitations people may have had in terms of affluence and money, you know, there are enough examples of people who are also shining. So let's look at them. All I can say is, you know, do your best, be positive and see what better can be done. Um, Mudit? Yeah, yeah. I think that's it, the end of the uh, questions. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Mudit, uh, for the session. It was very useful and it was an interactive session. So I'll invite Pavan uh, to do the uh, word of thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Kala. And uh, Mudit, thank Little you. bit voice, Pavan, can you increase okay. the voice? Oh, is, it, is it better now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kala. And uh, Mother, thank you so much. It was definitely a very interviewing uh, uh, session for us. You know, I really, until uh, when, when you again asked uh, that, you know, is it, is it, uh, we should wind up, you know, is when I realized it's been, uh, you know, about uh, 90 minutes that we've been uh, listening to you and, uh, you know, time just passed around. Uh, thank you once again for sparing time for us. 
um, and 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 uh, you know thank you for your team as well to uh, you know be there with us to support that i'm i'm definitely taking a lot of uh, you know thoughts uh, again which what i you know for uh, for me personally i feel that the takeaway is you start consciously um, uh, and and uh, you know you, uh, you you would would certainly start looking at your actions and would think about twice before you take an action around you know simple task that you mentioned about uh, you know stop doing being into the comfort zone or your where mind is already tuned to you know the, the tooth but, uh, toothbrush example that you mentioned about or handwriting you know writing from the right to the left is just basically to see how how can you tailor your mind around it's more about being conscious of how your mind is uh, working around just on the lighter note though you know my right hand writing i'm a right hander mm -hmm. and my family can't understand what i'm writing so i was just wondering when you made an example how would i how would i how would people read when i'm writing with the left hand? So, <laughs> so you know but aside to that but you know i i take your point well that um, you know one one needs to consciously train the mind think what you're doing and the biggest uh, point is that a one start to uh, you know live in the present rather than the past or the future you know what what you worry about and second is that um, you start responding rather than reacting i think these are the two strong takeaways that i'm personally going to take uh, from from uh, you uh, not having negativity around or not impacting I uh, believed, but you know there are circumstances where one gets into it. Uh, but you know the the the, uh, the the you know the the only point that one can look into it is to work uh, continuously upon oneself to get rid of that. And I, I believe that um, if you are consciously working onto it, one would get there one day for sure. So thank you once again, Mudit, and thank you members for uh, being with us uh, for, for this long time. Uh, being a Monday, I can understand it must have been a very, uh, you know, a, a tough day to start with. And, um, you know, again, uh, one of the very relevant joke, let me just share what, what I just got today. Uh, and I just loved it. Uh, uh, and because of Monday is where I am saying, uh, they say that the first five days after the weekend are the hardest. You know, <laughs> so we, we've started the hardest day today after the weekend, and uh, there are another four days to go, right? Thank you so much, Madhat. Thank you very much. Such a pleasure always to speak to such an August audience, and you guys are really sharp. Pleasure is all ours. Pleasure is all ours, uh, Madhat. Thank and, you so uh, much. Thank we you are, so much. Maybe another time for purpose. <laughs> maybe we are April, uh, we are April audience now, not August. <laughs> Pawan Prince Ji ko, Kala Ji ko, and Batra Sahib ko pranam, Mudit Saksana Sahib ko pranam. Thank you, Batra Sahib. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Thanks, Mudit. Both a chalaga Kala Ji, both a chalaga. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks uh, to Vijay as well, your team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.